Muy buenas tardes a todos los que están reunidos allá en la congregación. Good afternoon to all those who are gathered there in the congregation that the Reverend Mikhail Siqueira pastors in the Church El Octavo Día in Yacarey, Sao Paulo, Brazil, where the Reverend Jesus Barrieta is and his son, and also our brother Juan Francisco, and also our brother Ocasio, and all the brethren there from the congregation. On this occasion, when they are having this special visit of these brethren that came from Venezuela, today, Tuesday, April 16, of this year 2024, I remember that a day like today, the baptisms took place here in the year 2000, on a Sunday, April 16th of the year 2000, where the baptisms began here in Puerto Rico. And also at that moment, on that occasion, my wife and I were also baptized. And the whole congregation as well. And those were very beautiful days in which God gave us great blessings where the Scriptures were being fulfilled in the divine program and what was to be carried out in that year which he told us that we were entering in that seventh stage where we did not know when it would be closed. And everything that God showed us during that time of that ministry that God brought us through that powerful prophet, that Archangel Gabriel, in that manifestation in our beloved brother William Soto Santiago, God showed everything in that ministry what a new dispensation would be. And by that time, from the year 2018 to 2019, that dispensation was coming to an end and a new dispensational day was beginning. In the message, How to Serve God in His Perfect Will, preached on April 19th of 1998, our brother William told us there, and now, it is Jesus with His angels who would be on earth carrying out His work carrying out his program, corresponding to the last day. And he is the one who has the key of David. He is who shuts and no one opens, and opens and no one shuts. And if the door of the dispensation of grace will be shut, and the door of the grace will be shut, then it must be by the one who has the key, who shuts and no one opens, and opens and no one shuts. So, in that manner, that door that was open in heaven will be open here on earth. And through that door, who is Christ in His second coming, all the sons and daughters of God who will be living on this earth will enter in, and also the Hebrew people at the last day. Notice, who closed the door of the dispensation of grace and who is the one who opens it? It is the Lord Himself in His second coming who is that door open in heaven of Revelation 4, which says, Come up hither, that door that John saw up there, where he shows us a new age and a new dispensation, after the seven church ages, where the dispensation of grace was, 
and the time in which that powerful archangel Gabriel was in our midst. Notice how all of that is being opened, and each time we can see it more clear. Everything that God was carrying out since the time of the forerunner of the second coming of the Lord, the Reverend William Marion Branham, until our time. Now, if he is the one that closes the dispensation of grace and opens the dispensation of the kingdom, and all those who belong to the dispensation of the kingdom enter through that door, and for that God has to have an instrument on earth so that the human being, the elect of God, belonging to that dispensation, whom had to enter to then have the full fulfillment in them, that they would be part of that dispensation. For that, they had to enter through that door, and thus, that scripture be fulfilled. That is, that scripture would be brought to our reality with those elect of God, whom would be entering into that dispensation. In other words, the full fulfillment of those who belong to that dispensation is fulfilled now in this time in which we are living. Because the one who closed the dispensation of grace and opened the dispensation of the kingdom is in the midst of the people. He is the one with the keys. He continues saying, Now, see, when the door of the dispensation of grace closes, we find that there will only be the door of the second coming of Christ for the glorious millennial kingdom, and those who will enter the millennial kingdom will enter through that door, because the door of the first coming of Christ as the Lamb of God and His work of intercession in heaven will have already ended. In other words, when the door of the dispensation of grace was closed, there is a door open for all those who will be in the glorious millennial kingdom to enter. That is why the Hebrews are, as you can see them, in the millennium. That is why they resurrect after the three and a half years. Because they would enter through the door of the second coming of the Lord, which has to be veiled in human flesh. The door is Christ. The door is the fulfillment of His coming. Now notice, in this message, the work of God in this generation, preached on January 21st, 1986 in Venezuela. Our brother William tells us here, many people say, if God sends a prophet, that prophet must say, God sent me, I am a prophet. But notice what happened when Jesus read the scripture and said that that promise, that scripture, had been fulfilled in him. The people were filled with anger. He came to his own, and his own received him not. He identified himself with all the messianic promises, with all the promises of the first coming of the Messiah. He identified himself with them, showing that he was the fulfillment of those promises. And the more he identified himself, in the Scripture, with what the Scripture said about him, the less they believed him, the less the high priest believed, the less the Levites, the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the doctors of the law believed that he was the Messiah, the King of Israel. And that is how it is in our time. The more the seventh seal is identified with the Scriptures, the less the religious leaders and ministers those who are not ordained to enter with that group that is following him into the millennium, the less they will believe. Instead, they are going to turn more against. But the people were, as the prophet Isaiah said, blind to the work of God of those days. That is why Jesus said, seeing they do not see, they do not understand. Hearing they do not perceive, they do not understand what they hear. That is why when he said in the book of the seals, they had been in meetings like this. They had heard what those prophets had foretold. They knew what those prophets foretold regarding the divine judgment that would fall upon those who would reject his coming. They were facing the same things 
those prophets told them. How did he tell them? In his preachings. In other words, he says, they had been in meetings like this one, and they do not realize that they themselves are fulfilling all those prophecies that the Reverend William Branham spoke to us about. It is the fulfillment of the scriptures, of these scriptures in them. Do you see that each person fulfills scriptures as well? If they fulfill them back in the time of Moses, they turn Abraham and Korah, James and Jambres, and all those who stood up against Moses, the same way in the time of Jesus, and in our time would not be the exception. Every minister who stands at a pulpit to preach and to interpret the word, the message that the Reverend William Branham brought, which is in force, because one can say that he brings, because the message and the messenger is the same thing. Now notice, anyone who stands up to interpret the word is placing himself as a false prophet, a false anointed one. For if he's not a prophet, who sent him? And who has given him the authority to speak and say what is right and what is wrong? There is only one, and that's the angel of the Lord. Now, he continues to say here, and remember that if there is a false anointed one, then there must be a true one somewhere. If there are false anointed ones, there must be a true one. He continues saying, and that's the saddest situation for a person to read the Scripture, to see that God promises something great in the Scripture, to live in the time when God fulfills it, to see it with their eyes, to see the great tent cathedral there, which was promised that in the great tent cathedral, God would be carrying out a work, the work of that angel who was different from the rest of the seventh seal, where God would bring the thunders, the rapturing faith, and all those things, because he goes there. To live in the time when God fulfills it, to see it with your eyes, to hear him speak. In other words, remember that the Lord will do nothing except he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets, first. And if God promises something in the great tent cathedral, you must look for a voice. So therefore, these people are also listening because they hear. As we have always said, they hear. See, they are seeing, they are hearing. First, reading the promise, the scripture. Then, seeing them. Then, hearing them. He says, to hear him speak. And then for the person to say, I don't believe that. That is truly a person worthy of pity. In other words, look, they are worthy. Of course they are worthy. Worthy of pity. The elect are worthy to stand before the Son of Man. But they are worthy of pity. Why pity? Because they will go through the great tribulation. And they are told what they are going to receive. So that later on they will not say, I wasn't told anything. He continues saying, they wish to see what God has promised. They wish to see the work of God being carried out. And then not to be able to believe that work of God. Not to believe in the one God promised to send. Because people stumble over the veil of flesh in the person God uses to fulfill his promises because God can do nothing unless he uses a person and God can do nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, his prophets. That is why whenever God is going to fulfill something that he promised in his word, he has to raise a prophet at that time to tell the people the scripture and the scripture are the ones that are being fulfilled at this time. And then the people have the opportunity to see that work that God is carrying out. And the people can then do the work of God by believing in the one God sent and receiving his message to understand all that program that God is carrying out. And that is the fulfillment of the scripture. That is God fulfilling the scripture. How? Well, according to how he promised it. He promised that in the Great Tent Cathedral, the revelation, the rapture in faith, would be made known. And that is what God is fulfilling at this time. The people see that scripture. 
of which the Reverend William Branham said, there is only one thing that has not been fulfilled, and that is the fulfillment of the tenth vision. Now, to read that, to make that great tenth cathedral possible, to have your jobs, and from your jobs, from your effort to support, to pray, to be people who are in favor of the tent being built, to see the scripture, to see the fulfillment of that scripture being materialized, and then to see what God promised, to see it being fulfilled, seeing the instrument, hearing the instrument, and see all that and then say, no, I do not believe that. That is, as he said there, worthy of pity. Now, the elect of God, who have entered through that door of that new dispensation and the age of the cornerstone, they stand before the Son of Man, and they are people worthy of receiving the blessings contained in this new dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom, because they have been seeing. Let us take it back a little. They have been reading, they have been seeing, and they have been hearing and believing the fulfillment of the Scripture. The fulfillment of the Scripture. It's been for me a great privilege and blessing to be able to send these words of greeting to all the brethren gathered there in the congregation of our brother Michel Siqueira, there in Jacarey, Sao Paulo, Brazil, where the Reverend Jesus Barroyeta is. May God bless you, Barroyeta, greatly, and all those who accompany you, and all those who are there, brothers and sisters, gathered there on this occasion, and all those who will be listening to these words under the subject, the fulfillment of the Scripture. May God bless you and keep you, and may you continue having a happy afternoon filled with the blessings of God.